Great. I want to uh, thank the uh, program for having me uh, involved here. I think this is a uh, sort of a unique uh, opportunity to uh, do this with patients. We do it with all, each other all the time, and it gets very scientific. So this is, uh, this is good. I think I'm biased, but I think I have the, uh, the most fun talk up here because I can do very little science. There is a lot of opinion in here. So uh, it's going to be up on the main screen. Yeah, so uh, the purpose of this talk, just one disclosure, this is idiopathic scoliosis. So if I talk about all the different diagnoses of scoliosis, it's a little bit hard to sort of encapsulate it. Um, it's going to be a little hard to see on the small screens, but um, uh, we're going to try. So if you are diagnosed, what is the first thing you need to do is I would encourage you to take a deep breath. So uh, it's going to seem like uh, it's, it's uh, the end of the world, but for reasons that we'll talk about, uh, just take a deep breath. Remember, you probably didn't even know you had this diagnosis, right? So when you were in that, when you went to the school nurse or you went to your pediatrician, you probably didn't even know it was there. Scoliosis is common as we just heard about. So curves that are 10, 20 degrees are fairly common. So just look around the waiting room and you'll see other kids with scoliosis. The other thing is the scoliosis at this point is not causing symptoms. So scoliosis is not known to cause back pain when it's small. So the problem is back pain is fairly common. Scoliosis is fairly common. So there's a lot of people with scoliosis and back pain, but the two are not causative. That's good to know because you'll always have scoliosis, but it doesn't mean you'll always have back pain. You will have back pain because you get back pain when you're older like the rest of us, but it won't be because of your curve. The other thing to remember is this is nothing that you did, okay? So as we just heard about, idiopathic means we do not know what causes it. It can run in families, but doesn't have to. It may be that your sister do doesn't have scoliosis, but your cousin does. It's also not how you sit, it's not your posture. Sorry, mom. Uh, it's not how you carry your backpack. It's not what sports you play. So this is nothing that you have done to cause this. It just happens. So the good news is, because it's really nothing you've done, you can live your life as you did before you had this diagnosis, right? So it doesn't change what you can or cannot do. And you don't have to drive yourself crazy about how you sit or what you eat or what sports you're playing or, you know, whether you're doing ballet or gymnastics or swimming, it doesn't really matter. Bad news? Everybody wants to do something. It's like human nature, right? We all want to be able to do something that can change it, but there really isn't anything that we can do. Your sports career is not over, right? So you have to go this. You can continue playing all the sports that you did before. It won't affect your performance. It's not going to make your scoliosis worse. Even if you need a brace, you can take your brace off for your sports. And even if you have surgery, you can go back to most of the sports you had before. So I have kids who've had a fusion that have gotten a uh, scholarship for swimming, right? And that takes a fair bit of flexibility. This is really important. So I think if you have the diagnosis of scoliosis, you should own it. And I'll explain what that means in a minute. But um, sort of telling the people around you that you have scoliosis will help. And this really pertains to brace wearers in particular. So my best brace wearers are the ones that tell their friends, right? So middle school, high school, tough time, right? Everything's changing, confusing, weird. And kids tend to pick out insecurities in other people because they're insecure themselves. So the, if you own it and say, listen, I got scoliosis, I'm wearing a brace, no one's going to really bust you for it. But if you try to hide it or really hide it, it becomes much more difficult. So my best brace wearers are the ones that really uh, tell their friends. The other thing you need to do is ask questions. So this is your body. This is your diagnosis. You need to understand it. And the key is to write them down. And the reason you need to write them down is because when we tell you you have scoliosis, you're going to be nervous and upset, right? You're going to, it's going to be sort of a bad visit because you're going to be like, whoa, right? So write them down. You will think of tons of questions, but you won't think about them until after you've left. And then you're going to think that you're going to remember them when you come back, but you won't. So write them down on a piece of paper. So the best questions I ever get are on a piece of paper. And there is no bad question. And in fact, most of the best questions come from the kids, to be quite honest with you, that I get. Now, you want to do your homework to understand your diagnosis, but you have to be careful what you read. Uh, so Mr. Google can be good, but it can also be uh, tough. So there is a lot of information out there if you search scoliosis. Some of it's going to be too scientific. Are blogs good? One thing you have to remember is a lot of, not everyone, but if you post things on the internet, ten, people tend to post things that are a little bit more negative. I'd say there's a little bit more of a negative slant, so you just have to be careful with that. I encourage you to get out there and read. There's lots of great educational uh, sites out there, including this uh, uh, and some of our research sites. But if there's something you don't understand, make sure you ask your doctor. Then just make another appointment. So we may tell you you have a diagnosis. We may tell you you need a brace. We may be talking about surgery. It's always good to make another appointment because that first appointment is going to be sort of, I tell people they'll probably remember about 10% of what I told them. So now that everyone sort of has calmed down, you come back and you bring your list of questions. You got to remember if you're going to talk about surgery, you're going to talk about brace. It's a big decision, right? You have to understand what you're doing and you need to make sure you're comfortable with that decision. So I think that having that other appointment is very helpful. 
The other thing is I never discourage people from getting another opinion. So um, you may like what I said or you may you know, understand me, but you need to be comfortable with this diagnosis. So I say it's okay to go talk to someone else, whether it's a brace or surgery like that. More information can only help. You guys are smart, intelligent, and so more information will help you. And if you're going to have a brace or you're going to have surgery, you need to be comfortable with that decision. Your outcome will be better if you are comfortable going in and you're comfortable with your surgeon. Just a 30,000 foot view on bracing because Nick's going to talk about bracing, but the bottom line is bracing is worth it and you probably can't hear that enough. Uh, it's not easy, uh, but bracing is worth it. This is my only scientific slide, but I show my patients this graph on the right and I'm sure Nick will show it as well, but this just shows you the success of bracing based on the number of hours you wear it, right? So if you're wearing that brace up that 16 to 18 hours, your success rate is pretty good compared to wearing it not at all. So bracing does work at keeping the curve from getting bigger. The other thing is, is if you have to go in a brace, you get to bargain for compliance, right? So this causes a lot of, dis of discourse at home, a lot of frustration, a lot of fights. Uh, I have some parents that want to kill each other. The, the, I say, get a picture of me and put a dartboard up and blame it on me. You know, you have to wear this brace a fair bit if you get in a brace, but you can do all your sports. So you can come up and I always say all fun things are allowed outside the brace. So you figure out what your fun things are and you continue to do them. That's going to be different for everybody. You guys got to come up with a plan. Generally means you get a new wardrobe too. So uh, parents, you can bribe them with new clothes and kids, this usually means you can bargain for getting more clothes. So uh, that generally is what a brace means. And then just a 30,000 foot view on surgery. So this is not like your Uncle John surgery, okay? So if you need surgery, kids do great. There is a reason I went into pediatric orthopedics because kids do better than adults. You're out of bed the day of or the day after surgery. You do not generally need a brace after surgery. Kids feel pretty good in about a month, if not sooner. And in fact, I'm generally holding kids back from doing things because they're feeling too good. You have to remember that it is easier to get out of bed in the morning when you are 15 than when you are 30 or 40 or 50. Just ask them in this room. So guess what that means? That means it's easier to get through the surgery as well. Experience in your uncle or your dad or your grandfather is totally different, right? They probably had a different diagnosis. They probably had a different treatment and they were a different age when they had it. So it's useful to talk to them, but you have to remember that they're going to want to talk about it, but it shouldn't scare you because it's slightly different. So in summary, it's going to be okay. Um, as you, scoliosis does not cause symptoms. Live your life. And if you need a brace or surgery, it's going to be okay. Thank you. <laughs>